Okay, here it is, finished and painted. Here's my guide plate. That bolt right there removes this part of the guide plate. It won't reach up here into the rollers all the way. So I have a guide finger that will reach all the way into the rollers that you can bolt on. Bolts onto that threaded hole and that threaded hole. Piece of angle iron on top. Quick release. I just put a long bolt through here. Jam nut. Locks it down. Quick release is easy enough to find. Uh, got a power button, stop button that I added to it just in case you have to stop it in case something shorts out inside the box. Alright, this is what makes it go. Bicycle sprocket. Chain drive garage door opener. When I was trying to figure out what to use, found out the chain on this is the same as a bicycle chain. Pull this cover off here. Alright, because garage door openers ain't made to run continuously I took a big fan out of a computer added that to it with a power supply I believe it's 12 volt power supply whatever voltage the fan needed mounted that in there to circulate some air across the motor uh, even on a bead roller it won't be running continuously so it should work fine uh, Put a cord on it. I think that cord's about 15 feet long. I didn't want to have to use an extension cord. The stand that it's mounted on is made out of scrap tubing that I had left around here, but some of you might recognize some of this tubing. It's an old weight bench. Added casters on the bottom of it so it can roll around. Put some pieces of, I think that's half or five ace rod to mount all my different dies on. Added jerk fittings to both blocks. Put another clamp on. Uh, I had a hard time figuring out what kind of hardware store to find these from. These are for a go-kart axle from my local small engine shop. Bicycle sprocket is welded to one of them, locked onto the flat with the set screw. This will keep the axles from walking back and forth a little bit. Hopefully it will help keep the dies from moving back and forth. On the front, grease fittings. Very hard to see the spring through from this side. Let's go around to the back side here. Here's where the spring comes up through the top, through the hole. This bolt is set just so that it's snug, so that it'll slide up and down. And I've drilled it for a set screw to keep the bolt from loosening up. I wish I could get in there better. There's a screw set in from the back side to hold that spring in place. And there's a hole drilled all the way through this square tube that the spring goes all the way up through and it locks onto this little T-bar. You can see the spring locking on it right there. Uh, 
we'll see how well the camera is going to pick this up that's the screw in a little angle bracket that the spring hooks do and that makes the whole thing spring return up whenever you release the quick release all right uh, I guess uh, fired up for a little demonstration oh one more thing foot pedal control got this off eBay I will either in the comments or whatever that's my wiring diagram so I know which wires come out of it I rewired it for what I needed it for it's for like a sewing machine but it works great for this uh, works even better if you turn the power on Stick a piece of metal in it here. Try to do this with one hand. Yeah, uh huh. Cannot do it with one hand. All right, got it plugged in. Just to stop here, just tighten this bolt down to hold it in place. Green button right there turns power on to it. Lock the lever down. Follow the guide. Yeah, I didn't quite follow the guide that time, but puts a little bit of a crease in it. Probably could have tightened it down a little more. And that kills all the power to it instantly.